Hello everybody, good morning again. This is part two of Edgar Degas, Paintings That Dance. This book is by Kristen N. Cole and Marianne Coca Leffler. So back to the story. Edgar Degas was different. He liked to paint indoors in his studio. He would gather all the sketches that he had done around town. Then he would paint the pictures using oil paints. So this is an example of his oil painting of a lady ironing. Edgar bought lots of paintings from his friends. It was like he had his very own museum, but not many people got to see these paintings. Edgar liked to be by himself in his crowded studio and it was crowded not with people, but with his paintings. Do you believe he even had a full-size stuffed horse in his studio? Well, he did. Edgar also had lots of Japanese prints. He had one over his bed, just like I have an Edgar Degas poster over my bed. He liked the way that Japanese artists showed the beauty and pleasure of everyday life. This is Edgar's painting. They are different in some ways, and they are the same in some ways. This is the Japanese print that Edgar had hanging over his bed, which was an inspiration for this oil painting that Edgar Degas did. In one book I read, it said that Edgar Degas' paintings are a little like photographs. They are snapshots of life. I think I understand what that means. Just like in photographs, someone, sometimes part of the boy is cut off. And we talked about this, boys and girls, when we studied Georgia O'Keeffe and how she would cut off the edges of her petals, of her flowers, and that made her work unique. I found out that Edgar sometimes took photographs to help him with his paintings. Here's the photograph he took. It is of a dancer. So here's a photograph of a dancer. And this is the narrator's photograph of her mom. The ballet, my favorite part. Edgar liked to show movement in his paintings. I guess that is why he loved to paint ballet dancers. He studied the dancers backstage before the big performance. So he would study the ballet dancers as they were getting ready for their big recital. He would sketch them first and probably take photographs too. And then he would use his sketches and photographs to draw them. And his colors are just, I think, very beautiful. We do all the same things, tie our ballet shoes, stretch, practice at the bar, and rehearse. He learned all the ballet steps so he could paint them. I wonder if he practiced with the dancers. If he came to my class, I could teach him all the positions. Ms. Martin wants to know, do any of you take dance classes? If so, let me know. This is another famous Degas painting, oil painting of dancers in the studio. Sometimes, he invited dancers to pose for him in a studio. They would do still poses. That means they had to hold still for a long time while he sketched them. That'd be kind of hard to do, wouldn't it? One of these dancers was his 14 year old neighbor. Her name was Marie Van Gotham. Marie was the model for my favorite piece of artwork. It is called Little Dancer, 14 years old. These are the sketches that Degas drew of the Little Dancer. This is me in the little dancer pose. So this is the narrator of the story. She was a dancer when she was younger. Hold, holding this position is hard work. This is a charcoal stick. A lot of artists will use charcoal to make sketches or gesture drawings. Edgar used charcoal for his sketches. Charcoal is messy. Kind of like those oil pastels we used this year. They got kind of messy, didn't they? But they were fun. Little dancer is not a painting. It is a sculpture. From his many sketches, Edgar made practice sculptures. Edgar worked on the sculpture for years. The sculptures were made out of wax. Many years later, lots of bronze copies were made of the Marie sculpture. They are in museums all over the world. I got to see one at a museum. It was awesome. And Miss Martin got to see one too. I took a trip with um, Decatur High School when my daughter was a junior and some of the juniors in the class, we saved our money for a long time and I got to go with my daughter. We went to the museum in Paris 
and we were able to see this sculpture and it was, it was pretty amazing. Little dancer facts. The wax dancer was painted and then dressed in real clothes. When people first saw the sculpture, they thought that it was ugly. I think it's beautiful. Everything was covered with wax except for the tutu, which is this part of the dancer skirt and her hair ribbon is a real ribbon. The story is that a doll maker made the tiny ballet slippers. If you look at the bottom, you can see there's tiny ballet slippers that the statue has on. The wig is made of real hair. The little dancer sculpture is 39 inches tall. The narrator is 52 inches tall. I was surprised. I thought she was going to be bigger than me. An x-ray was taken inside holding at the sculpture. There was a skeleton made out of wire and broken wood paintbrushes. So Degas made a skeleton out of wire and paintbrushes and then added the clay on top of that skeleton to get this lifelike form that is just, it's very, very famous and very loved. Edgar also liked to go to the racetrack. He would sketch horses and their riders. Then guess what he did? Edgar brought his sketches home and painted in his studio. Boys and girls, in just a little bit, I'm gonna show you how to sketch a horse. We're gonna do that together today if you want to. Just like his ballet paintings, he showed the horses and riders before the race, like dancers waiting backstage. So he liked to do paintings right before the action of the race happened. I guess he wanted to capture the excitement that everybody was feeling before the race or before the big dance recital. This is one of Edgar's sketches. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna draw the sketch together in just a little bit. This is an oil painting of Edgar's horses. As Edgar grew older, he began to lose his eyesight. Edgar did, like Miss Martin, Edgar did more sculptures in wax, but most of the time he drew with pastels. We drew with pastels in class, boys and girls. He used big strokes. I love the bright colors. Look at his use of color. Look how bright this yellow is, how bright these pastel colors are. And then notice how the background is kind of muted, which makes these bright colors pop out. Pastels are fun. My pastel drawing, Edgar's pastel drawing. This was drawn from pastel. This is what his strokes look like up close. So you notice how he probably used his finger to kind of blend some of these colors in but we use pastels, like I said earlier, and I, I can't wait to do some more pastels with you soon. This is a photograph of Edgar taken when he was older. He looks very serious. Maybe he's thinking about all of the paintings he's done. Edgar worked as an artist all his life. He never married or had children. If I met my artist, what would I ask him? I don't think I would want to meet Edgar Degas. I found out that he was grouchy all the time. Kind of like Miss Martin in the mornings, right? Ha ha. I'd rather just look at his beautiful artwork, but I'm really glad he didn't become a lawyer. As Edgar Degas died on September 27, 1917. He was 83 years old. Kristen, you did a wonderful report. My favorite Degas is the little dancer too. I love sculpture because it is 3D. That means three dimensional. You can walk around one piece and look at it from so many different sides. It will look completely different depending on when you, where you are standing. Miss Brandt, the narrator's teacher. The end, I hope you've enjoyed this story, boys and girls. And in just a moment, I'm gonna show you how to sketch out a horse, just like Dagon.